Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see you guys. Um, you know, if you would grab your Bibles and um, turn to uh, the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 20, verse uh, 12. That's Revelation 20 and 12. If you could just stand so we can read God's holy word. God laid this scripture on my heart. He said, tell my people about this scripture and I'm going to break it down for y'all. Yeah. You know, if you, when you get there, you know what to say. All right? All right. Clear your hearts and just open your ears to receive. And it reads, it says, and I saw the death small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. Another, another book was open, which was the book of life, and then the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the book. Now, what that, what that says is, I'm going to give you the books the books of heaven, which is, you got the book of life, the book of, um, the book of the lamb of life, and then you got the book of, the book of remembrance, then you have the book of tears, you got the book of works, it's all types of different books that, um, God judges on, which, which we were, um, it's what you put in the book, that's what God writes down, and then, this is when you get to judgment day. God explains to his people, like, some might not be in this book, which means you got to get out the, that line and go to the next line. And then you got to get out the other line and go to the next line because you're not in the book. So God knows every tears you cry. He knows every move that you make. He knows if you've been in his word. He knows if if your heart's been pulling towards him, he knows all these things. So I just want to pray for y'all today. If you guys could just bow your heads, open your hearts, just open your ears to receive. Because God, he's amazing. If you if you could just, just open your ears and open your heart to receive him. things will come to you unexplainable like it just won't happen so just open your hearts let's go into prayer heavenly father right now god we just pray father for your presence to be here right now oh god father we just thank you father for another day oh god another day to just be in your presence oh father so father we won't have it no way else oh father so father we just thank you for being in your presence oh god Father, we just ask that every heart opens today, oh Father, to receive your word, oh God, to receive what you have in store for them, oh God. Father, let our heart carry, carry your word daily, oh Father, so that when it comes out of us, oh Father, it comes out of us and to the next person that needs to be, needs to hear you, oh Father, that needs to receive you, oh God. So Father, right now, we just thank you, Father, for your amazing grace on our life, oh God. Hallelujah, Father. We just shout your name today, oh, Father. Father, we pray for our nations right now, oh, God. We pray for this world, oh, Father, that we're living in, oh, God. We just thank you, oh, Father, that, that your hands are on, are on our life right now, oh, God. That your hands are everywhere that we, we expect, where, everywhere with our feet thread, oh, Father. You, sh you shed your light on, upon us, oh, God. So, Father, we just want to thank you for right now for that, oh, God. We put on our, our, our full armor of God right now, oh God. And we go into the spirit right now, oh Father, the spirit round, oh God. And we we um, we we loose your angels right now, Father, to be on guard on us, oh Father. Because, Father, we know, oh Father, there is an enemy that's trying to persuade, tw twist your word from um, what, we, what we're hearing, what you're saying in the spirit, oh God. So, Father, right now, I pray for every deaf ears to be open in the name of Jesus, oh God. And 
every scale to be falling off their eyes, oh Father, so that they can see what you have in store for them, oh God. They can see where they're going, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So Father, right now, we just we dismantle every demonic debris, every demonic uh, wall that has been set up against us right now, oh Father. Father, we we, we um we put on our, our sword, uh, uh, we raise our sword right now, oh God, in the spirit, oh Father. And we begin to slice every demonic spirit, oh Father. Slay every uh, every giant down, oh Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we take full authority, oh Father, over our nation, over this world, oh Father, that you have um, given us, oh God. So Father, right now we just pray that your spirit live in us, oh God. Let us walk up right, oh Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So Father, right now we pray for every soul that has been lost, oh God. Father, we pray also, oh God, that they make it to heaven, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we don't want nobody to go to hell, oh Father, because hell is, is, is a place without you, oh God. And a place without you, oh Father, is just death over and over happening again, oh God. Torturing happening again, oh God. So Father, right now we just ask you, Father, to just renew, renew the right spirit in us, oh God our hearts, oh Father. Set the right motive behind it, oh God. Let us focus back on you, oh God. We thank you right now, Father, for being in this place, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that that, that everything that we're asking for, oh Father, we shall receive it right now, oh God, because we're on the open heaven right now, oh God. And we're unashamed of the gospel, oh God. So Father, let us walk up right, oh Father. From this day forth, oh Father, let us walk with, with, with integrity, oh God. Let us walk with the boldness, oh God, that, that Jesus, Jesus came on earth, oh Father, and did it over and over again, oh Father, unashamed of your word, oh Father. So Father, every time we, we make a decision, oh Father, we will seek your presence first before we even make, a, a, make up our mind, oh God, on that decision, oh Father. Whatever it might be, oh Father. Just ask for your for your permission first, oh God, before we move, oh God. We ask for your oil to be poured out in this service today, oh God. We ask for your oil to be poured out on your people today, oh God. We ask for them to be renewed, oh God, refreshed in the name of Jesus, oh God. So Father, we just ask you right now, oh God, set this place on fire, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let your spirit, Father. in their corner right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We ask for, for, your, for your hands to be at work on their body right now, oh God. Father, we just ask for healing right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. So Father, we just thank you that it's already done, oh Father. We thank you that sin cannot find us, oh God. We thank you that sickness cannot find us in the name of Jesus, oh God. So Father, right now we just ask for your supernatural blessing to flow, oh God. Let your oil be poured out, oh God, in this service, oh Father. The, for the ones that are online, oh Father, let, let your oil pour out on them also, oh God. Let their house be, on, be, be, um, be covered under the blood right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. And let their mind be covered under your blood also, oh God. So Father, we just thank you. We acknowledge who you are to us, oh God. So Father, we thank you love you, O oh Father. Let heaven be rejoiced in this moment right now, O oh God. We thank you, we love you, and it's so in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want us to make a sound of worship right now in this place. We are here to worship our King. So right now, all over this place, if you can, just stand to your feet right now. And just begin to open your mouth. Let's break up the atmosphere right now. Oh, Father, we come right now to give you worship, Father. You said that your, that your worshipers must worship you in spirit and in truth. 
And Father, we want to have an encounter with you right now, oh God. We want your glory to fall in this place today, oh Father. So we lift up your name in this place, oh King. We put a praise on our lips, oh Father. We ask that your glory falls in this place. I need you all to push in this place. Let's set an atmosphere of worship. Oh Father, you are our King. You are Adonai. You are El Shaddai, oh Father. We invite you into this house right now. As we lift up a worship to you. As we lift up a worship to you. There is nobody greater than you, oh God. We bow down before your throne. As we worship under an open heaven right now, oh God. Let your angels rest in this house right now, oh Father. As we lift up our voices. 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 You are, you are worthy. Yes, and no one, no one can worship you for me.
say you are holy, Lord. to put a praise on your lips wherever you are right now. I want us to create a sound right now in this house. It might be uncomfortable, but I want us to create a sound because we are here right now to worship. The word of God says that we must worship him. Remember, it's not an option. It's a command. Find your posture of worship right now. There are flags in the back, but we're going to create an atmosphere of worship in this place because the heavens are open above us right now. And in this moment, God wants to do something new with your life. He wants to do something new and fresh with your life. He wants to breathe fresh breath into your lungs. He wants to create new wineskins out of your life. So you need to worship him right now. Oh, we worship you, God. Oh, we magnify your name. You're a holy God. You're a holy God. You're a worthy God. You're a worthy God. You're a faithful God. You're a faithful God. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. You're a worthy God, you're a worthy God. You're a faithful God, you're a faithful God. You're a mighty God, you're a mighty God. You move a mountain, God, you move mountains, God. You do miracles, you do miracles, God. You are healer, God, you're a healer, God. You're a healer. Move mountains, God. You move mountains, God. You do miracles. You do miracles, God. You do miracles. You do miracles, God. You're a wonderful. You're a wonderful God. You're a wonderful. You're a wonderful God. You're a beautiful. You're a beautiful God. You're a beautiful. You're a beautiful God. We bless you, God. Oh, we bless you, God. Oh, we bless you, God. And we lift you up. We lift you up, God. Oh, we lift you up. We lift you up, God. Oh, we lift you up. We lift you up, God. what the power of worship can do. It opens up the heavens even wider. And it's easy for him to pour around on us. It's easy for him to pour out on us. Thank you. 
need you to engage in this worship right now. You do feel. I know we sound real pretty and we look real good, but I need you to engage in this worship. Find your posture right now.
you have to get out of the space where you are, please move around. If you need to walk around the sanctuary, walk around the sanctuary. If you need to bow down right now, just bow down to his throne right now, wherever you are. Get uncomfortable in the presence of God right now. make a beautiful sound to the ears of our Father. worship you I live one more time
make some noise for our worship team. I'm excited to be a part of a house that know how to truly usher in God's spirit to worship. Amen. And our prophetic worship dancer, Miss Crystal, is drenching the atmosphere. So right now, we just want to welcome you guys. Welcome everyone to the Salt Life Experience Church, KE Church. Hello, hello, welcome everybody. I see some faces in here. So listen, if you are, this is your first time visiting, I want you guys to go ahead and raise your hand because our ushers have some visitors cards that we want you guys to fill out if this is your first time. Again, we welcome you guys. We are the place where leaders gather and because we gather, things do what? Things shift. So here at Salt Life Experience, 2021 is the year of what? Y'all remember? Great faith and even greater demonstration. We have already seen some demonstrations this year, haven't we? Praise God. So again, welcome all of our visitors. Right now, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys, to all of our e-church, those who are watching online, I want you guys to share this live broadcast, invite some of your family and friends on to join. Also, for those who are here physically in the building, if you are following our Facebook page, we want you to take your cell phones out and start some watch parties on your page. Even though you're here physically in service, go ahead and pull out your phone, go to Facebook, and go ahead and begin to start some watch parties. Amen? Start some watch parties so that way we can have our family and friends all over different cities and states join us. So I have a few announcements here, and then we're going to go straight into our tithes and offerings. So you guys, this, um, we have a new members class coming up in a couple of weeks. We have any new members here who haven't taken new members class? All right, well, if you know someone who has not taken new members class, we want you guys to see Minister Lee's or see someone on our operations team. We're going to get you a date and get you plugged in. Also, guys, every Wednesday, every Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m., we are having our, I'm sorry, it's actually at 7 p.m. We are having our prayer call before Bible study. How many of you guys are on that call? Well, listen, it's not just for our ministers and our leaders. It's for anybody. So if you have not joined those calls, it's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're going to go ahead and have you call in. Our prayer call number is right up here. You can screenshot that flyer. Make sure you call in. It is some powerful intercessory prayer. And we're just prophetically praying for our nation, for our church family. And again, that's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, directly after those Wednesday prayer calls, we're heading over to our Facebook Live and we're attending Bible study with Pastor Emmy. So make sure you guys are following the Facebook page so that you can join our Bible studies every Wednesday. How many of you guys watched the last Bible study last Wednesday? Well, listen. Everybody, hands should be up. If you have not watched that teaching, you need to go back because Pastor Emmy has been teaching on decoding dreams. Any prophetic dreamers here? I don't know about you guys, but I've been dreaming. And ever since she's been teaching this, I've been dreaming more. Amen. And so to bring that up, every month we are reading two books a month. And so the two books that we are going to read this month is God Still Speaks. I'm excited about that one. I, had, I read it last year, so I get a chance to read it all over again. And then the book we were just talking about, Decoding Your Dreams. So if you do not have these books, we encourage you guys to go on Amazon, Amazon Prime it. It'll be there Monday. What happens is a lot of times when you get these books for the uh, months that we're reading, and if you in tune with Bible study, you're kind of already in tune. It's kind of like your guide because Decoding Your Dreams has been giving us so much revelation along with what Pastor Emmy been teaching on Wednesday night. So make sure you guys go on Amazon Prime and get those two books. They will change your life. Amen? All right, last but not least, every Wednesday uh, we are fasting. Um, and we fast from you choose the item that you want to fast from. So in addition to us fasting, after we fast that day, we go to our intercessory prayer, and then we go straight on Bible study. So if you guys did not know that, join us on our corporate fast every Wednesday. You can choose what you want to fast from. That's the beauty of it. All right? So that's enough for announcements. Um, wait, one more last announcement. We are looking for volunteers in our pastoral care team. 
So if you are a member here and you are not serving in any exhilarator, we ask that you just reach out to uh, Minister Denise or one of our operations team because we're currently looking for volunteers to serve on the pastoral care team. So if you are interested, again, to see Minister Lanise, or you can see myself today. Also, we're looking for members on our outreach team. So if you're looking to volunteer, see me, see Minister, uh, Minister Lanise, and we'll get you plugged in. Amen? All right, so we're going to move on to one of my favorite parts of serving, which is giving. So I want you guys to go ahead and begin to prepare your tithes and offering. We have our ushers, they have envelopes. So if you want to give something physical, go ahead and put your hands in the air for me and you're going to have them bring you over an envelope. We have one on both sides. So if you have a physical donation that you're giving, go ahead and raise your hand in the air and keep it in the air and they'll bring the envelope right around to you, amen? However, if you want to give virtually, which most people do, you can give via Cash App at Salt Life Experience and you also can visit our website. Our website is www.saltlifeexperience.com. You can hit donate and you can give with any major credit card. Amen? All right, I'm going to hit give you guys some time to prepare your giving. And when you get, when you're finished giving, our ushers are going to instruct you to come on and drop it in this giving basket right here. So we can get the basket put up front. Once you guys get done, they're going to instruct you row by row to come on up and touch the basket. Even if you gave something online, you can just come up and touch it if you feel free. All right. Start with our back rows. You guys can stand on up and come on to the front. And you guys can follow the leading of our ushers. Has everyone had a chance to give? All right, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna ask for everyone to stretch their hands forward, and we're gonna go ahead and pray over our tithes and offering. And then after we pray, we're gonna go ahead and walk them up, Minister Jessica, for another song, and then we're gonna go straight into the word, amen? So if everybody can stretch their hands, hearts and minds clear. Father God, right now, in the name of your son, Jesus, we just thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for this moment to even just be able to worship in this atmosphere, God. And right now, God, we give you our tithes and we give you our offering, Father God. And we ask that you bless it and bless us, Father God. We ask that you bless every single person who decided to give via their here physically in the building and if they're online. We pray that whatever they gave, that you return it back to them 100-fold. So we thank you, God, that this soil was blessed. We thank you, God, that their homes are blessed, their businesses are blessed. And we seal this prayer in the name of your son, Christ Jesus. It is so. Shout amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and welcome up Minister Jessica as she leads us into another song. We've been learning about, well, being, we've been, Pastor Emmy has been preaching about being a, under an open heaven. Is there another mic that I could potentially use? 
We've been learning about what it means to be under an open heaven. We've been learning about waiting in, in high places and understanding that there's still some work that has to be done so that the weight of God's blessings don't crush us. So in this season, while we are waiting for God to, to receive whatever it is that he's getting ready for us, as we continue to be under this open heaven, I just want us to worship right now. This song is called The Blessing. And I think it's a beautiful song because it's literally a blessing. So as I sing this, I want you to think about what you have been waiting for, what God has been doing in your life, the work that he has been doing on you, on your spirit, while you are waiting for him. And I want you to open your hearts as we worship and as I sing this song, as I minister this song to you, and really allow the words to penetrate your heart. I want you all to really be able to receive these scriptures that I'm going to sing, because that's what it is, it's scripture. So if you would, just close your eyes. I don't even want you to be worried about what I'm doing up here because we know that at Salt Life we worship God. That's our goal when it comes to worship. It's not a concert. So I know we just had a high, high worship and a high, high praise. But guess what? There's still room for more. There's still room for more. So let's open up the heavens. Let's allow his glory to fall and make it easy for him to come in and make it easy for us to receive the word of God that Pastor Emmy, that Pastor Emmy has for us. Oh, I worship you, God. You're amazing. Lord, bless you. His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. How many of you received that? believe that I want you to sing this with me. It says, Amen means I believe. children in your 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 children
your children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, in your children, in your children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around. children and their children and their children and their children. just to bow your heads as we pray. I want you to take about two minutes right now. And I want you to petition the Lord for what it is that you need, that you desire. And I even hear the Lord say that right now is a time even for intercession to lift up someone else. some things that are going on around you if somebody needs your prayers they need the blessing somebody needs the blessing so for two minutes I want you to just pray begin to pray begin to pray father we ask you right now in the name of Jesus Christ to 
intervene on the behalf of your people. Right now, God, we ask that you would step in. We give you full permission and jurisdiction, Holy Spirit, to do what it is that only you can do. Go ahead, right there, begin to pray, press, press, press. Your prayers have power. There's power in the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous. Begin to pray. Lift up someone. Whisper their names. Whisper, whisper prayers. Whisper, whisper their names. Someone needs you to stand on the gap. Come on, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Whisper, whisper. I hear the Lord say, actually, take your mind off yourself. Whisper someone's name right now. Oh, begin to cry out for them, yes. Somebody can't even pray, so they need you to pray and say their names, yes. Oh, we lift them up, lift them up to you, God. Watch over your children. Watch over your people, send angels, send angels, send them now on assignment. Somebody's even stuck on the side of the road right now. And we ask God that you would literally begin to send angels right now to help them, Father God. Send someone, send an angel to help them, Father God, as they're on the side of the road. Someone's in the hospital right now. Father God, and they're dealing with loneliness and feeling like nobody would even remember to pray for them, God, but we pray now. We lift them up, Lord. Hallelujah. Someone is dealing, Father God, with the divorce on the table, Father, and they're brokenhearted about it. And Father, we just lift up that person right now, God, who's facing the divorce, Lord. We ask that you would be a keeper, Lord. Right now, Father God, someone's facing, Lord God, potential job loss. And Father, we ask that you would be their provision, Lord. We lift them up to you, God. There's a myriad of different things that are going on, different challenges that people are facing in their lives. God, somebody's dealing with contracts that are being held up, Father God. Somebody's dealing with some financial things that have been locked up that they need to be released. And so, God, we stand in the gap for them. And we lift them up, lift them up to you, oh God. Send your angels on assignment. Oh, God, right now. Come on, can you press? Can you press? Can you press? Are you seeing it? I even see some children that are afraid right now. Some children that are suffering some things. We lift up the children. We lift up the babies, God. Your prayers are working, yes. Come on. Press, press, press till you feel the release. Your prayers are moving things, yes. Lord, I decree that as a result of this time of prayer, God, that we're going to get reports, Father God, praise reports, that our prayers and our time of intercession, Father God, intervened where we were able to ask you to step in, God, and you sent your angels to go and do things on your on your people's behalf of their prayers. So, Father, I thank you. I decree, Father God, turn around, 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 turn around. Just begin prophesying that in the atmosphere. I, I prophesy right now, turn around over God's people. Turn around. What the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it around right now for good. Turn around, turn around, turn around in doctor's reports. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Oh yes, turn around with the business deal. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Somebody was even getting ready to lose their child to the system. Father God, but we speak turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak turn around, God, to the financial situation. We speak turn around, turn around right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, someone was dealing with the potential split in the family, but we speak turn around to that. Right now, turn around, turn around. What the enemy meant for evil, I need you to begin prophesying that. What the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it around for my good. Hallelujah. He's turning it around for their good. For the prayers of the righteous availeth much. 
turn around, turn around. I even hear someone was going to need knee surgery, but I hear God is saying, turn around for that. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Healing supernatural. Turn around, turn around. In finances, turn around, turn around, turn around. Somebody's car was about to be repossessed, but God says, I'm turning it around. I'm turning it around. I'm turning it around. Somebody's lights were about to get cut off, but God says, I'm turning it around as the church comes together to pray. We loose angels on assignment right now. Now just begin to praise the Lord for what he's done. We praise you. Oh, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will wear me like a garment. Remove me out of the way. Father, I submit myself as a vessel to communicate to your people what is on your heart and on your mind. What is your will for this house? Father, I pray, God, that you would continue to cover me as I bring this word. And Father, we bind every demonic spirit of sabotage, of hindrance, delay, or detainment that may try to infiltrate this moment. We pray over the lives, God. We pray over the sound. In the name of Jesus, every person in person or online will be able to receive this message. Let every ear be open to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. We will not miss it. It's in Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. I will not miss what the Lord is saying to me. Well, y'all, it's good to be back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back up here preaching with you all. Uh, y'all need to enjoy it while you got it. Enjoy it while you got it. This baby's almost here, so maternity leave will be coming. So pay attention while I'm here. Amen? No, truly, I really believe that the Lord wants to give divine instruction to you guys now because there will come a time where, you know, there's a time where God will give you training and equipping and then there's a time that comes for the testing of that and that's the time where typically the teacher is silent amen so that's coming your testing is coming so pay attention to your training amen all right uh this series that we are in is called open heavens open heavens open heavens accessing kingdom gates and doors uh, today I want to talk to you about contending, contending for the opening of heaven's doors. Amen. I want to talk to you about contending for open doors and gates in the heavens. And I want to break something down to you because I know that we've been in a really exciting series. And many of us have been experiencing breakthrough and been seeing God do mighty things. And then you might have got hit with a couple of bumps and you're trying to wonder what is going on, what's happening. So this word is either for someone who is coming, going into a challenge and adversity. Maybe you're in the midst of a challenge or adversity, or maybe you're getting ready to come out of it. Hallelujah. But either way, whichever one you fall into is for you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So I want to talk to you really, really quickly about uh, what it means to contend. I want you to write this down. I heard this word from a minister in Africa many, many years ago. And when he said it, I, I can't remember the, the, the gentleman's name. But when he said it, it was like one of those phrases that never would leave me for the rest of my life. You ever been in a situation like that? You hear something you're like, I will never be the same after I heard that. <laughs> I will always remember that word. I may not remember their name, but I remember what they said. And so I want to share this with you. It's going to help you in your life. I want you to write this down. It says, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you contend for. Say that again. You don't get what you deserve. You only get what you contend for. I'm going to say it a, a third time. You don't get what you deserve. You only get what you contend for. So let's do it a fourth time to each other. Look at somebody. Find somebody. Look them dead in the eye. 
look at them, tell them, listen, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you contend for. See, that's going to mess you up already right there, to mess you up. Because many times we are walking around and we think that we, because we're holy, because we love God, because we pray for people, because we're kind, because we're tithers, because we're practicing abstinence and all the other things, you, you get real, real good on your, your checklist, your Christian checklist. I'm doing the right stuff. Surely, surely I'm going to get what I deserve as a Christian. You ever been there? Come on now. You, you know, come on now. You've been there. You, God, I'm trying to do, you know, now listen, I'm not saying you always was living right, but with the times you did, come on. Maybe you in that season right now, you're doing pretty good on your little checklist. Then you start feeling sorry for yourself when stuff don't go right. Because you trying to complain to God. Well, God, I ain't out here in the club. God, I ain't out here, you know, doing this and doing that. Why is, why is this stuff happening to me? Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to? Can I preach? Can I preach this afternoon? So I ain't saying you always been that way, but maybe in the season where you are, you know, you get real righteous. God, I'm a good person. I'm a good Christian. I'm doing your word. Surely I should have so-and-so that has happened by now. Surely my wife should have showed up by now. Surely my husband should have showed up by now. Surely I should be out of debt by now. Who am I talking to? Surely my kids should not be acting this way. I'm saved. Come on now. Come on now. But look at them, look at somebody say, but you don't get what you deserve in life. Oh, that mess up the Christian right there. Don't it mess you up just to make you sad? Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. You don't get what you deserve in life. You only get what you contend for. That's a whole nother mindset. That's a paradigm shift. Paradigm is the, the series of thought patterns that set up the, your belief system. It's got to shift. Look at your neighbor and say, shift. You got to shift the way you look at your life. And you got to shift the way you look at the blessing. You got to shift the way you look at heavens being open. Let me tell you something. Do you think just because you a good Christian that the devil's not going to resist you? You think that? We think, God, surely. You know that little meme with the girl with the ponytail in the hand? You remember that meme? She was in school and she was looking. She was confused. That's how God be looking at us sometimes. Like, you don't think, you, so you think that you're going to get what you deserve simply because you're living right. No, baby, this is spiritual warfare. And it's not just God that's in on this. You've got an adversary. And so while God would love to just be releasing stuff to you, you got to understand it's somebody called a blocker. Come on, how many sports fans do we have in the house? Come on, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, or whether it's soccer, they anticipate somebody trying to score, so they set up people to be on the defense, okay, to keep you from scoring. So you think that just because you ironed, you washed your little outfit, you got the grass stains out of it from the last game, put a little bleach in to get it back white, you know, and you was doing your little workouts and you was, you know, trying to do your little reps and stuff that you ready for the game and ain't nobody finna block you? God, why is my marriage under attack? I'm the pastor. God, I can't believe that I'm getting attacked in my body and I'm an intercessor. God, I can't believe that the enemy then came for my child. I am a saved blood, Bible talking, tongue talking, anointed person. How? God said because you're in a fight, it's a war. Don't forget that. Write that down. Don't forget that you're in a war. And I almost forgot this principle this month myself. Because the enemy began trying to attack my body. I'm like, God, now, now wait a minute. Some other areas started coming under attack. And I said, now God, now you said the word was that it's open heaven. You said, uh-huh, I said that. Yep, it is. 
then why I don't feel like it's open right now? <laughs> Got a little excited. Did a little, did a little dip in a two-step because I was excited for a minute. See, you might have been excited. You thought, see, you think you're the only one. We about you. If it's happening to you, more than likely it's happening to your brethren. You got excited. You was, you were, you were, oh yes, I'm seeing breakthrough. I'm seeing forward advancement. Doors are opening. Then you hit the middle of the month. You're like, wait, 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 where the door? Hold on, wait. Now wait, I feel like I'm in a hallway. I was supposed to be in a room, but now I'm in a hallway. I'm trying to, and the doors ain't opening. What? But, but Pastor prophesied that it was open, open season. It's open heaven now. What's going on? God said, tell my people not to forget that they get what they contend for, not what they deserve. Just because you're following his commandments don't mean that the enemy is not going to try to block you from scoring. I, 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 I was impressed by, my, by the Holy Spirit to share this dream with you. Y'all got that book, right? Decoding dreams, y'all better get it. When I put out a book, it's for your help. It's, it's to help you out. How many people have seen an increase in dreams since we've been on this dream series with the book during Wednesdays? Let me see him. Raise them high. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is activating because he's trying to help you to move around the enemy's blockages. He's trying to give you answers through your dreams. I had a dream this week that I was uh, with my husband, and we were going through a building that had many floors, and we were supposed to get, I don't know what we were trying to get, but I knew we were on a mission, and we had to get to a particular floor because something for our mission was on that floor. But in the dream, I get, we get on an elevator, and we go up to the floor that we're supposed to get off, but when the, when the ding hits that we arrive to that floor, guess what happened? The doors wouldn't open. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The door wouldn't open. I made it to the floor, but the door wouldn't open. And so I began, it was interesting. It was like the, the elevator doors turned into uh, large zippers with layers, like layers of zippers. You know, zippers on your pants or something. It was like a huge, big zippers, but there were multiple that were, that were stacked in front of each other of the door. And I began to have to do spiritual warfare on the door and unzip layer by layer by layer to pry the door open. And eventually, the door opened and we were able to get off of that elevator to go on our floor. When I woke up, the Lord already told me to begin to pray into that dream. And this message is a part of what this dream is because that dream was not just for me, it's for the body. It's for the body. In other words, there are levels that God has set for you. But baby, let me tell you, the devil gonna try to zip that thing up. And you can't blow your way through it you can't kick your way through it. You can't complain your way through it. You're going to have to do spiritual warfare to get it open. I had to literally use spiritual warfare on that door to get it open. Now, that was a first for me. I've done a lot of things in my dreams, but not spiritual warfare on a door. I pray for people in dreams. I've cast out demons in dreams. I've slain snakes and tigers in dreams now this was a new one i said so now i'm i'm this ain't an animal and it's not a person it's an actual door i gotta do spiritual warfare yeah god said you talking about accessing kingdom gates and doors you must understand that there are kingdom demonic kingdom gates and doors also and if you're gonna effectively access high level heavenly realms you better learn how to deal with demonic gates and doors look at your neighbor say i got to learn how to deal with these these gates and doors 
See, we get so fixated on the heavenly realm, the divine realm, that we forget that the enemy is a carbon copy. So if God has gates and doors, then baby, don't you realize that the enemy has demonic gates and doors that are set to lock you up, that are set to lock you out. That's another one. See, that what I was going through, the, on that elevator, it didn't, it wanted me to have to go back down. See, the enemy right now wants you to go back down. He wants you to turn around because you're saying, oh, I tried to get off the floor and the door wouldn't open. Oh, I tried to believe God for my healing, but it didn't come as fast as I thought. Oh, I'm trying to get the house, but it's taking as long. It's taking long. I guess it ain't time for me. You know, and we over spirit. We talk ourselves out of certain levels because we being too spiritual. Well, maybe it's just not time. No, maybe it is a demonic door that's trying to lock you out. And you better learn how to open that thing. Because everything that God has for you on your next level is on the other side. And if you don't know how to come out of being emotional and get spiritual, tr spiritually trained, then you're going to be in some trouble. If you, can't, if you can't get into, you know, why you see people going around in cycles. You know what a cycle is? A cycle happens in a believer's life when they keep on coming up against demonic gates and doors without the revelation of how to open them. So they just go around and around and around and around, never going. Never. See, the enemy in that dream could have let me go down to the other floors, but he didn't want me to get to that one. That would have been a cycle. What if I would have just kept coming back? Well, let me try today. Oh, man. I'm going to try again tomorrow. See, don't it sound like some of you like you've been going around in cycles trying to get into certain realms and it ain't been happening and now time is going by. Months are going by. Years are going by. You tried to get out of debt before. You tried to get the Dave Ramsey course. <laughs> you tried to pay off the credit cards. But for some reason, I keep on getting into this same door of debt. I can't get out. I didn't try to do everything that the financial advisor said. I tried to do, I went to the Christian conference on finances. Why I can't see to break out of this thing every time because baby what you got to realize is that yes you took care of your habits and yes you began to tithe and yes you began to do what was right you changed because there was a part of us needing to change come on now right personal responsibility but see what you forgot was was that there was a, a door a demonic door to financial freedom set up to keep you out of it in your life so the level that God wanted to take you into a financial freedom, it's not God is resisting you, it's the enemy. Jesus Christ. And so you got to learn how to do spiritual warfare over these doors. Sometimes the door is a generational curse. That's the door. Is this, okay, come on deliverance. Sometimes, see, see, sometimes these de demonic gates and doors are, are, are curses that have been placed on you. You got to learn how to do the spiritual warfare to get this thing. Move the stone. Do you see what I'm saying? Come out. I got to get out of bondage. See, we've just been looking at the, the, the demonic realm, just demons. But I need you to understand that there are demonic gates and doors. There are demonic spirits that are guarding these doors. So when you're going up against certain things, it's not just a, 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 a spirit. This is a high-tech built gate that's been structured that no matter what you do in your own strength, every time you try to come this way, you're going to have to be turned around because it ain't going to open. Y'all want to learn? I'm going to teach you. Let me define contend for you. What does it mean to contend? <clears throat> Let me sit down. I know my husband back there blinking. He, over, he back there. All right, let's define contend. To contend means to strive, to vie. It means to contest. 
It means to make something the subject of dispute. It means to litigate. To contend means to challenge. To contend is to struggle for superiority or victory. In other words, to contend means to compete. Woo. Look at your neighbor and say, I got to compete for some things. <laughs> listen, listen, hear that word, to compete. God began to show me, he said, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you compete for. Who's the competition with? It ain't a person. No, see, we don't strive after the flesh. We strive after the spirit. In the spirit against a enemy. In other words, God is saying, you are in a war. You are in a game that there is an opponent. This is a competition. The enemy is trying, every move you make, come on, whether it's checkers or whether it's chess, every move you make, the enemy's watching it so he can, because he's in a competition with you. So yes, the heavens are open, but don't forget this is a competition. I'm about to just walk off the, the platform now because that's all you need. You've been trying to figure out where is this warfare coming from because you're in a competition. You're not in a competition with your cousin. You're not in a competition with that dude at work. You're not in competition with that other business, that other company. No, you're in competition with the kingdom of darkness. And see, some of us got to wake up and realize that there is a competition. See, we've been walking around saying, I don't mind my business. Yeah, mind the business in the natural. But you got to pay attention to what's going on in the spiritual. You have an adversary. He's competing with you, Minister Crystal, for your career, for your family, for your mind. For every gift that God placed on the inside of you, there is a competition in the spirit. Where you make one move, the enemy got to try to make two. Because he does not want you to what? Win. Oh, yeah. See, many of you, when you join the church, it seemed like now all hell is breaking loose. Yes, because you're in a competition. You make a move. Oh, yes, the enemy is about to make two. Many people, as soon as they got saved, when they weren't saved, they weren't dealing with as much stuff. Soon as they choose to give their life to Christ, now all hell breaks loose. Yes, because it's a competition. The enemy is your competition. Not your mama. Not your sister. Not your brother. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers of wickedness in high places. And it makes sense that the higher you go, the stronger the demonic resistance is going to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? So first thing is you got to shake off the victim mentality and you got to become a competitor. Shake it off. Shake it off. Yeah, the enemy, I shot my shot and he shot his and, and now we've about toe to toe on the, on the scoreboard. But baby, I'm coming back for some more. See, we got to shake this attitude of feeling like, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm getting toe up. I'm getting beat up. Oh, whoa, God. But I'm a good person. Um, So... You're in a competition. God cares, but the devil doesn't. He wants to discourage you. He wants to get you out of, out of hope. He wants to make you feel like you're a victim because that affects the way you fight. It affects the way you compete. He wants you to say, you know what? I'm tired of trying to get out of debt. I might as well figure out how to maneuver this life. Ah, shatabo kosaya. You know what? I'm tired of trying. Every time I try to, 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 you know, date a godly person and, and, and pursue godly marriage, it always turn out into something. I might as well just accept that I'm, I'm just probably not marriage material. This just was going to be for me. I might as well. You know what? I'm tired of trying to fit in and trying to make friends because, you know what, everybody always doing stuff to me. I might as well just forget people and go and stay black and die. I'm through with people. Come on now, the enemy. See, we all have problems. Look at your neighbor and say, we all got problems. Oh, yeah, our problems might be a little different, but we all got them. So no matter what type of problem you're facing, I'm tired of dealing with kidney failure. 
I am tired of dealing with, the, with this lupus. I'm tired of dealing with this arthritis. I might as well just go ahead and just be, go go ahead and just figure out, I'm go ahead and do a lupus awareness month and write, do a GoFundMe and just figure out how I'm gonna just, just, you know, do something in this situation because it's just, this is my, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of saying these confessions. Maybe this is what it's gonna be. Come on. No matter what problem, if it's in your health, if it's, in, if it's relational, if it's in your finances, if it's in your spirit, no matter what it is that you are facing, let me tell you something. We all got something that we got to fight. So, what does it mean? God says you don't get what you deserve just because you're cute. Just because you don't make no, no sounds, you don't bother nobody, you're trying to wonder what's going on. God says you get what you contend for, what you show up to c compete for. Do you show up and fight? Or just because you think you got a jersey that you're supposed to win the championship. No, you got to fight. Go with me to um, Daniel 10, chapter 14. I'm going to share something with you really quick. Now, remember this. Write this down. There are three heavens. There's the first heaven, the second heaven, and then there's the third heaven. Because one of the ways that you are going to win in this, this round, we're in a season where it's open heaven. This season, God has called for us to win. I'm going to give you some cheat codes, okay? One of the main ways that you win in, in these, these competitions with the enemy is you got to get revelation. See, as long as you are, you don't have revelation, you won't know what you're fighting, you won't know how to fight, and so he, you can just keep getting whooped, and he keep on scoring on you, scoring on you, scoring on you, scoring on you, okay? So now we got to get revelation knowledge. This is a revelation. Understand this. Y'all with me? Understand this. The heavens are open. First heaven is the earth realm where we live. Second heaven is the, is the, the, the air of the atmosphere above the earth, the sky and above the earth, like outer space. And then the third heaven is where God's domain is, where he sits above it all. Understand, that's the third heaven. God said, tell my people the third heaven is open, not the second. This is going to shift the way you've been looking at things. You're confused. God, I, you said the heavens was open. And I felt a little drip drop. Now, where the rest at and what happened? I feel like it was like turned on and then it just got cut off. He said, tell my people the third heaven is open. But it is the second heaven where the principalities and powers rule that are locking the, they're trying to lock things up from the first. They cannot lock up the third. But they can lock up the second and the first. And the problem is, is that we own the first. Daniel 10. Go with me, chapter 12, 14. Verse, verse 12, excuse me, verse 12. Go with me there. Check this out. Can I teach you for a minute? Y'all with me on E-Church? This going to be enough for the whole rest of the month. Because it's going to change your attitude. Because the enemy comes to make you doubt the word of God. He makes you come to doubt that God is who he says he is. And he comes to make you doubt that if it, is it really worth you living how you're living. And God says, I am not a man that I shall lie, nor the son of man that I should repent. What I say is what I say, and it is so. But you need to get a revelation as to why these things are happening. It says, then he continued, this is Daniel, and he's speaking to an angel. The angel says here, then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. Next. 13. Stay with me now. Quick, 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 quick. 13. Verse 13. But 
the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me. This is the angel. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Don't move. Where is there? Daniel's on the first heaven sending up a prayer 21 days prior. That prayer made it to the third heaven where God sits and reigns. But it was there in the what heaven? The second heaven where the prince, this demonic prince, it ain't a holy prince, it's a demonic prince of Persia over that territory that held up this messenger angel for 21 days. Detained. Detained. Pastor Eric's a police officer. Anybody ever been detained before? You can't go forward. That's what that means. You can't, you can't go. Wherever you was trying to go, you ain't going to be able to go right now. Not right now. Because you detained. You're being held back. Jesus, Father, I prophesy every detain is being broken off your people now in the name of Jesus. Next, 14. Jesus. He says, but now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. Now go with me to Daniel 10, verse 1. Go to verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, check this out, a what? Revelation was given to Daniel. Its message was true and it concerned what? A great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. Understand this. What Daniel was interceding for, what he was praying for, was an understanding because there was a great war that was getting ready to happen. I wonder what great thing is getting ready to happen in your life. In other words, the prince of the territory, the demonic prince that reigned over the, the second heaven over that area on the first caught wind that there was about to be a revelation explained to Daniel. Um, Prince of Persia said, now if he gets that, he's going to have, come on, Mr. Tyra, an advantage. <laughs> I can't let him, why, why, did, why did it concern the Prince of Persia to hinder, detain, delay, the angel in the second heaven to get Daniel's answer? Why, why did it even concern him? Mr. Tyre, why did it even, why did it, why did it matter to the king of Persia? What was it, what was his business dealing with it? I'll tell you why right now, they were in a competition. I need you to catch this. You are in a competition with the kingdom of darkness. You're on the team of Jesus. We're set to make certain scores, to win a battle. There is a competitive side to this. So just like when you were getting ready to go up for promotion against a, 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 a physical enemy, you know, she ended up dropping a coffee on your dress right before you went in so you didn't look too good. Ever been there? Anybody, anybody ever had one of those experiences? Maybe you was the one who dropped a coffee on somebody. Repent. Listen, check this out. Hear me what I'm saying. You ever been going up against somebody else for something that you wanted? And have you ever experienced being blocked? Somebody trying to pour a little something on the floor so you can fall and look crazy. Well, maybe you was the one who dropped some stuff. Y'all need to repent. Pr repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. Why? Because it's, you want them to look bad. You don't want them to get there first, or you don't want, if they do get there, you don't want them to get there in the fullness of their true potential. Why? Because you want it. Who wants the glory? The enemy wants the glory. He's in a competition with God. You hearing what I'm saying? The enemy wants the glory. So if God is going to give you an advantage, 
the enemy is going to try to delay that to block that. And I'm sorry that you sweet and you cute and you don't bother nobody. You just pay your tithes and you just stay out of mess. Why is it my house that had to get flooded? Come on, who I'm talking to. I'm trying to explain to you that there is a competition going on and you better get your mind right and start learning how to fight back because the enemy don't play fair. The entire time Daniel prayed, boom, 21 days earlier, he fasted and he prayed. And the first time he fasted and prayed, God heard it. See, the enemy can't stop God from hearing your prayers, but he can try to delay the answer. So yes, the heavens are open. From the very first time that Daniel prayed, God sent it. But there was a detainment in the spirit. In other words, there was a gatekeeper over that nation that was refusing to let the angel of the Lord through. It's like y'all remember that, that story that, that trolls under the bridge. Remember that, you know, who's that coming over my bridge? Was it Billy Ghost Gruff? It was something like that, child, something. I couldn't stand that story. I couldn't, I can't stand a troll. I can't stand a troll. But they, they try to regulate entryways and exits because the gate is an entry and an exit. So the dream that I had, let me tell you about what's going on in the earth realm concerning God's church is that there are levels that God has called you up to. You need to get off on that level. You need to go through that level for the next thing that God has for you. But you're going to have to learn how to do some spiritual warfare over some gates. Or you're going to be walking around thinking God ain't good. He's not faithful. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. The prophet's lying. And I just need to settle. God says, no, first thing is, that's the revelation. Teach my people to pay attention to the pattern. If there are things that you have been coming up against, it is not by coincidence. Let me tell you something. There are demonic gates and doors, and you need to learn how to do spiritual warfare over them to open it up. Because guess what? They can be open. Hallelujah. Now let me share with you really quickly how to contend for these doors and these gates to be open. Now remember, a gate protects territories. A door protects rooms. Write that down again. A door, a gate protects territories. A door protects rooms. So the elevator was really as a gate because it was letting me off to a level. Ooh, I, I need y'all to, to stay with me real quick. Get me crunk. The elevator wasn't the door. It was a gate. Because an elevator don't let you off into necessarily a room. It lets you off into a level. Ooh, I just can I got to sit down. God is saying, body of Christ, I got another level to let you off on. And it's a whole lot of doors with a whole lot of stuff that I want to take you through. But you're going to have to do some war on these gates. Destroying the gates, these gates of hell that have been set up against you. <laughs> that is why Jesus told Peter that on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. A gate? Why did he say a gate of hell? Gates of hell come to you. To set up spots in the spirit to say, you can't pass this level. He told Peter that. He said, and the gates of hell shall not. Do you, listen, this wasn't like he was saying, Peter, you're going to go into hell. Right? You're going to go into hell, Peter. And you're going to start knocking over gates in hell. No, he's saying there are gates of hell that come to set themselves against you. He's not saying, Peter, you're going to go to hell like I did and take the keys. No, Jesus already did that. He went. We don't need to go to hell. <laughs> Look at somebody say, I don't need to go there. He already did it for me. Thank you, Jesus. No, no, no. He's talking about gates of hell that will literally come out of the pit 
and be sent against you in your life. Be sent against you and your family. Be sent against you and your church. Be, be sent, set up against your nation that will set up to resist the kingdom from advancing. In other words, there will be goalies set up against you to block you from moving forward to other dimensions. He said, but it shall not prevail. Okay, now let me tell you this real quick. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you how you, if you if you how to know if you're dealing with a demonic gate right now. Y'all ready? Can I help you out? How you know if you're dealing with a demonic gate? Let me help you out. You can know that you're dealing with a demonic gate many times by the enemy if you're in a season of temptation. Feel like Ice J.J. Fish. Y'all know who he was? He used to sing real bad. That song, that, 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 that part right there made me just want to do a bad note. You're in a season of temptation. You're in a really sensitive season right now of temptation. Uh-huh. See, see, temptation is a sign that you, you battling the gate right now. Because the enemy will try to get you off track by sending it. See, 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 if you're not close to the territory, you're not close to the gate, there's no reason to send you temptation to get you off the, the trail. Now all of a sudden, you're being tempted by, with stuff that you had not been tempted with for a while. You're being tempted to pull, be pulled into gossip. You're being tempted to be pulled into sin. You're being tempted to be pulled into a certain lifestyle that God had pulled you out of and delivered you from. You've been tempted to watch certain things or listen to things that you should not, that, that normally you wouldn't be dealing with. But now for some reason in this particular season, under the open heaven, all of a sudden I'm just getting tempted like a mug and I'm really having to stay at my altar like never before to make sure I stay clean, my heart stay right, and I stay full following Jesus because this is a season of some serious temptation right now. And we all got different temptations. I ain't just talking about the temptation to go to the strip club. I'm talking about the temptation to, to be messy, the temptation to cause strife, the temptation to be, to be selfish, the, the temptation to those kind of things, the heart stuff too in there, the, the temptation to lie. I just want to lie about it. I, just, I don't want to tell the truth. I just want to lie. Who am I talking to? The temptation to take a bribe. The temptation to walk in the way of the ungodly. People are trying to invite you to come out to stuff that you're like, I don't think I should be there. And normally in my other season, it was fine. I'll be by myself. I go to Panera Bread and eat some soup and some bread and dip it. But this season, for some reason, it sure all sound nice. You want me to go on the what? With the what? With the who? Let me see what I'm doing later after church. So this is how you know that you are coming up against a demonic gate. Because the enemy will try to get you off track by using temptation. Temptation comes in seasons. Hear me. I wish I could walk around, but I can't. I got to sit down. Let me tell you something. Temptation comes in seasons. <laughs> Write it down. Let me tell you something. I wish Pastor Eric would come tackle me. Sit down. Okay? Listen, temptation comes in seasons. Write that down. This is important. You need to learn the playbook. Temptation comes in seasons. You are not tempted all of the time. Hear me, Jesus. Write this down. You are not tempted all of the time about everything. No. But usually, temptation comes in strategic seasons. I said... Usually, temptation comes during strategic seasons. Look at Luke 4. Go to Luke 4. It says, after the temptation in the wilderness, the Bible says that the enemy departed from Jesus until a more opportune time. Let me tell you something. See, the last season that thing left you, the last season that thing said, well, I can't get him now. That thing last season said, I can't get him now, right now. But guess what? I'm going to wait for another opportune time. 
What's the opportune time? When you're in transition to another level, that's when the enemy likes to come get you. Let me tell you something about pickpocketers. They like to pickpocket in crowds. They like to pickpocket in busy transit stations. They like to pickpocket when you're going on a bus route. They like to pickpocket when you're out in the midst of a, a, of a game because people can just bump into you. It's a lot of stuff going on. You ain't paying attention. So until you get to the car, you didn't even know somebody just stole your wallet. Be careful during transitions because by the time you get to your place, you're going to look up and be like, did, I, did somebody swipe? Where is my peace? Oh, my God, what didn't happen? Where, where did my joy go? My God, where did my, where did my marriage go? Oh, my God, where did my kids go? When did this happen? When did they take, when did they take my credit score, God? Y'all so funny. Oh, my God, Lord, when did it take my edges? Lord, when did it take my, Lord, when? when? It was during that transition. Y'all need to hear what I'm saying. When it happened, <laughs> it happened during the transition. Pay attention, and you can keep them. Look at your neighbor and say, keep your edges and your hairline for my man. You look up, when did it happen? When did it, JJ, when did it happen? It ain't happened yet. Keep them. Keep it there. Amen. So one of the ways you know you're coming up against a demonic gate is that the enemy will try to get you off track with temptation. Let me tell you something. Now's the time to guard your heart like never before. Now is the time to keep awareness that the enemy is after your will. Because if he can get you off track with temptation, baby, he can keep you out of your territory. Listen, it takes about 21 to 30 days, I'm almost through, to form a habit. But it takes about 40 days of resisting a temptation to break its power. I'm going to say that again. It takes about 21 to 30 days to form a habit. But it takes about 40 days of resisting a temptation to break its power. Temptation has power. You can be tempted into a Listen, this is not the time to be cocky. This is not the time to be cocky. Oh, I got, I'm just saved, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And Oh, that was 10 years ago. I'm fine. I don't, I don't do that no more. And then you think that you can resist it, and you're not putting up proper barriers. And you ain't been cleaning your heart and going before the Lord and saying, God, created me a clean one and renew a right spirit within me. And you thinking you don't have to do no maintenance on your relationships or maintenance on your body or maintenance on your spirit or maintenance. On, and you being cocky, God said, well, you better watch because it's a more opportune time. The enemy's been watching you. So it takes about 40 days of resisting a temptation to break its power. Jesus was tempted for those 40 days, but the thing that he used was the word of God decreeing the word it is written. During this season, let me tell you something. Go back, the Lord said, go back to February, March. When did we do, uh, it's my winter season. Every season is my winning season. God said, tell the people, go back to that. Many of us have led up on that, that teaching. God says, apply the pressure. Look at somebody say, apply the pressure. Keep applying pressure. How much have you been decreeing the word of God lately? You just walked around and received a prophecy from Sunday, but you ain't been decreeing that it's open. You haven't been decreeing Philippians 4.19 that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You haven't been decreeing that I am healed, that by his stripes I am healed. You have not been decreeing. What have you been decreeing? See, sometimes we get, we lay off of things. And this is the way that you keep advancing against the enemy in the, in the competition. You have got to go back to your words. So let me tell you something, give you the strategy. I'm almost through. This is the thing. You've got to go back to the training. This is time to use the training. Look at somebody say, I got to go back to the training. What was, what, what was it? The training said, the training said, 
Deuteronomy 24, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14 says, but thanks be to God who in Christ always lead, leads us into triumphal procession. Okay, Romans 8 and 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Say this with me, every season is my winning season. When you're coming up against demonic gates, if you're going to fight temptation and you got to do some spiritual warfare on it, one of the strategies is power by decree. When I was in that dream, I was decreeing every scripture I knew over that door, which is the word of God. I was literally peeling layers of that door, that metal door back because of the word. How much word have not only you been consuming, but have you been speaking? See, you've been in the midst of getting this thing. You've been in the midst, Pastor Eric, get ready, come on up. You've been in the midst of, of receiving the prophetic word, and you've been praying, and you've been worshiping, you've just been enjoying the Lord, and enjoying the angels, and they flying all around you and all that stuff. But have you forgotten that you must still decree? How much decreeing have you been doing? How much? So let me tell you something, what you got to do. This is how you persevere and get these doors open. Number one, you got to use the word. Use the word. Let me tell you something. A confession is different from a decree. All of this I taught already. I already taught it, but I'm just giving you back some of this. A confession is to build your faith. So you say you confess the word to build your faith. You need to go back to confessing it. But then when you pray, you need to decree it. A confession is different from a decree. Remember that. So if you're dealing with stuff and the enemy's been coming against your confidence and you've been feeling discouraged, you got to go back to confessing. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. I am more than conquerors through him. I am victorious in Christ Jesus. You got to go back confessing the word. I am healed by his stripes whether I feel like it or not. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus whether I feel holy or not. I'm going to confess it. The second thing, pay attention decreeing when I pray I must decree that I decree that the heavens are open over my life I decree that every demonic gate be smashed asunder I decree that by the power and the authority of Jesus I shall advance and go through the, the these these next levels because guess what if God be for me who can be against me Romans 3 and 8 get back your work can, can y'all give me some feedback? I just want to make sure y'all get it. I feel like the teacher that's about to say, y'all go on the test. You're going to have a test. You're going to have a test real soon. You better know how to fight. Now, this next part is you got to have a victorious attitude. Write that down, a victorious attitude. You got to confess the word and decree the word. The second thing, this is how you do spiritual warfare over these gates, how you going to get through. You got to have a victorious attitude. Let me tell you something. Your tears don't have anything to do with your faith. You can weep and still be in faith. Let me say that again. Your tears don't have anything to do with your faith. You can weep and still be in faith. What am I saying, Pastor Emmett? What, what are you saying? What I'm saying is, is that you can cry because it hurts. But get you some tissue, wipe it off, throw it away, and get back up. Ready to fight. My tears are a way that God has allowed me to be designed to release stress. So if I got to cry it out, I'm going to cry, I'm going to take my moment. But that doesn't mean I'm going to let go of my faith. See, you think faith means I don't cry. No, 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 no. It might hurt. I did. It does hurt me. But guess what? I'm After I cry this out. Can you get down some tissue? Thank you. Okay. Now it's time to get up and fight. You have to have an attitude of victory. You cannot be a victim and make it through these gates. Change your perspective and you will change your life. You have to also have victorious action. Victorious action. You have to participate. You got to participate. How do you participate? Let me tell you something. You got to still show up, whether this, the, the resources are there, whether the fruit is there, whether you see it manifested or not, you got to move by faith. You still got to show up. You can't wait till the, till the resource, you can't wait till it's seen, the, the coast is clear before you show up, you got to move by faith. And how do you do that? Let me tell you something. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
let me tell you something. W- depending on what you got, what you're going through, because we're all going through different things. If you call me, you say, Pastor Emmy, um, I need some advice. I'm going through some stuff. I'm going through some stuff in my marriage, or I'm going through some stuff in my finances. I'm gonna ask you, how many books you've been reading on finances? How many books you've been reading on marriage? How many messages you've been listening? Who you've been listening to? What sermons you've been listening to? Because I got sermons on a whole lot of stuff. And if you tell me none, you playing with that gate. You're playing with the gate. You don't really want to get in that. You don't want to get in. If you're not reading, if you're not hearing, if you're not really applying pressure Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How am I going to get out of debt? Or how am I going to get out of the divorce? How am I going to get out of the bad friendships if I'm not listening to anything that's reinforcing my faith that I can get out? You're not really trying to be married because you ain't ain't read nothing about how to be a virtuous husband or a virtuous wife. You still watching the real world. And and, uh, the housewives, you ain't serious. You still watching Netflix. They ain't got nothing to do with that. I can tell and so can the enemy about how serious you are about going to your next level by what you consume. Your consumption is going to matter to get these gates open. You got to get laser focused. You got to get, oh, baby, you better get serious about everything. I'm walking and talking. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm, listen, you better brainwash yourself. I am the victoriousness of Christ. I am able to do all things. I am, I am, I am debt free. Come on. I am a wife. I am a husband. Come on. I am a business owner. My business, I am a millionaire. You better be brainwashing yourself. I call it spirit washing. These things, go back. I guarantee you, give it 21 days. Oh, baby, let me tell you something. Because you can fast all day long. Ain't nothing going to change if you don't fast and decree. You can fast all day long, but it ain't going to change if you don't fast to hear the word and renew your mind by the, by, by the word. You can fast all day long. You can be super spiritual. I'm fasting. I'm fasting. Hallelujah. I'm doing a prayer, a prayer vigil. But what are you doing the rest of that time? Are you fi- if there is a specific identify the gate right now? I want everybody to stand. We getting out of here. I want you to identify the gate. What is it that you're trying to penetrate and get through? Think about it, because God want to give you strategy today. He don't want you getting up in here to get in- in- inspired. This is not an inspirational message. This is a war strategy. God said, I want you to get through. And you can. Get your phone out. Get your piece of paper. Get something out. Get something out. Get something out. The prophet giving instruction. Get something out. Your phone or a piece of paper. Write down the name of that gate. What is that gate? And you can name the gate whatever the resistance is. What's on the other side that you've been trying to get through? Is it healing? What's the name of that gate? A resistance to healing? So is it sickness? Is it infirmity? A gate? Is it a gate of, 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 of unwanted singleness? Is it a gate of, of, uh, of, of, of um, uh, poverty? Is it a gate of lack? Is it a gate of lack of influence? Is it a gate of, uh, of, of loneliness? What kind of gate is it? What's the name of it? What is it? It's trying to keep you out. Write it down. Write it down. So you got to learn how to look, look eyeball to eyeball with this stuff. Like I had to do it in that dream. And let me tell you something, baby. The exciting part is I got through. Oh, I made it through. I didn't remain in that box, that elevator. I got out. <laughs> so that means, guess what, church? You getting out. <laughs> you coming out. You getting out of this. You're not going to stay in this confined place. God is bringing you out into a large space. Somebody say a large place. You coming out into a large place. God is it is filled with doors, which means it's filled with rooms. It's filled with opportunities. It's filled with blessing. It's filled with, with, with greater levels. Let me tell you something. We're not staying on our last level. We already decreed that last week. We out. Now I want you to decide right now. You see the name of it? You circle it. That's the name of that gate. Now what you going to do? In the next 21 days, what are you going to do about it? What you going to do? You gonna sit up there and just let it keep resisting you? 
or you're going to applaud what I said. You, that means you got to start confessing again. Get your confessions up. You got to start decreeing the word again. Decreeing the word. That applies to that particular gate. So if it's a financial gate of poverty, you better get every scripture you know about being able to financially be empowered by the gift of God that comes through Christ Jesus. You better get them all. If it's healing, you better get all your healing scriptures, whatever it is. And you better target it like it was a laser beam trying to, trying to fight, trying to burst the tumor. And I'm going to put all of the laser energy on that until it explodes. That's how you got to get these gates open. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to have a victorious attitude. I might cry. I might shed some tears. But that does not mean that I'm not in faith. I might get frustrated, I might be irritated, but it doesn't mean I'm not in faith. I'm going to wipe my eyes, throw the tissue away, and go put my helmet back on and my mouth, my mouth guard. I'm going back out, I'm going back out. I might scrape my knee, give me a band-aid, I might say, ouch, give me some, of my, uh, some peroxide, pour it on that cut, and I might, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Sound like some of y'all right now in your prayer closet. But I'm getting back out there on that game. The game can't play itself. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Next thing you're going to do is make sure that you move in action, victorious at action. I'm still going to show up. I'm still going to make my appointments. I'm not going to cancel my plans. The plans that I had, I'm not canceling. Enemy want me to cancel it, I'm not canceling. I'm still showing up by faith. I believe God put pressure on the 21 days. Now right now I want you to come to the altar come to the altar come to the altar with your, with your gate and we are going to ask the Lord for the fire oh Jesus ask the Lord for the fire I want you to come on up here with an intention that says these gates they're about to be set ablaze we're going to destroy them come on pastor I'm going to pray. And those of you online, you can do the same thing spiritually. Just move out your seat online. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make a decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Lay it on down. Lay it on down. Yeah, 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 yeah. We... We will not be silent. We are going to worship him, and we are going to make it through. We're going to push. I will protect my victorious attitude at all costs. I will open up my mouth and confess the word. I will decree the word. I will continue to have victorious action. I will take action. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Right now. Get to pray. Worship the Lord.
do something. I got some paper up here. If you have some, I want you to tear out a piece of paper. If you need one and a pen, just put your arm. Because we're going to rip these up. We're going to crumple them and rip them. This is a prophetic sign of these gates being destroyed prophetically. We're going to do it at home. I want you to do the same thing. Go get a piece of paper. I want you to write down that gate that's been resisting you. And I want you to circle it and write an X over it and get ready. We're going to together, we're going to crumple these, rip them, stomp on them. <laughs> and our greeters ministry after service is over. They'll get them up. But we're destroying these gates today. Make sure you come to the altar. Be ready. Don't, don't, don't crack, don't uh, crumble them yet. We're going to do it together. Go ahead and write them out. that you are doing something in the natural as a symbol of what you are believing God is doing in the spirit. This prophetic act is very powerful because we're coming together in agreement. Can we all agree right now that it's time for some gates to come down, some demonic gates to move? It's time. Yeah, it's time. We've been specific and we know our training assignment this week. We're going to confess. We're going to decree. We're going to have a victorious attitude and we're going to operate in victorious action. Ah, we're getting through. Look at somebody say, well, I'm getting through. I'm getting through. I refuse to stay in the same place in the old levels. I refuse. I'm coming off of this elevator. Ha! Huh. This new round. So raise them high. And I want you with holy indignation. I want you to begin praying over this. Begin tearing it down. I want you to begin right now praying fervently in the spirit, taking authority. And now we're going to together. I want you, some of you might crumble it and stuff on it. Some of you might rip them into little bit of stress. Don't worry. We got somebody clean it up later. But I want you right now as you pray, I want you to decide, even online, we're waiting for you online that this gate of the enemy will not hold up what God is doing for us right now. So come on together. Let's pray and begin to destroy this paper. Come on, destroy it. decree that the same way we are tearing these pieces of paper and throwing them down so shall the gates of the enemy go I decree whoo Jesus come on clap your hands like they're on fire for what the Lord has done today as a matter of fact I dare you to slap some high fives with some people come on give me some Shaquille give me some give me some give me some come on you on your way back to your seat. Jesus, give me some. Come on, come on, come on. Come on destroy him, destroy him. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Woo, Jesus. Jesus, come on. 
Come on. Destroy, destroy, destroy. Destroy it. They're coming down. They're coming down. They're coming down. Coming down, coming down, coming down. All right. Now, do we have any people that want to be members or receive Jesus Christ? Either one, come forward. It's 148. Come on down if you want to. Let's get this, let's get this going. All right. All right. Pastor Eric, it's on you. Now. Amen. Amen. What a powerful, powerful message. Powerful message. And this prophetic act has really solidified it. The gates of hell. The gates of hell shall not prevail against God's church. And if you are part of his church, if you are part of his body, then the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. So these gates that have been set up, these barriers that have been set up, they must come down. Amen. 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 And amen. All right. We're getting out of here. We're getting out of here. What I see, you, some people might see a mess, but I see a message. I see a prophetic message. I got to take a picture of this. Whoo, Jesus. Some people might see a mess, but I see a prophetic message. I see gates of hell being destroyed at your feet. I don't know what you think, but I see you walking over the thing that actually tried to hold you out of your next level. I see it down. I see it crumble. I see a crumbling in the spirit of the enemy's gate set up against you. Hallelujah. So we just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. So don't feel bad about it. Don't be, oh, no, no, we get it up. This is a good sign. Ha. Some people see a mess, but baby, I see a message that the gates are under my feet. Jesus, and we're walking over them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get on out of here. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. <laughs> for we declare and decree, for we are the head and not the tail. We are above only and never beneath, for we are lenders and never borrowers. We are the very righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. For we are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. We are blessed when we come in and blessed when we go out. And as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.